In this video, we will be exploring the Undead plugin for Revit. We will be using it to manage point cloud data efficiently without overwhelming Revit or my computer. We will pull data from the point cloud, integrate it into our views and use the specialized tools to quickly generate a Revit model from a point cloud. Let's go. Undead is a specialized point cloud plugin that sits on top of Revit. In general, Undead empowers Revit point cloud users to enhance the scan to BIM process. In other words, to replicate existing buildings using 3D scan data and Revit software. Undead increases productivity and accuracy. Undead tools reduce the manual work needed to transform point cloud data into a BIM model nearly twice. First of all, Undead offers a completely different way of managing point cloud data, unlike the bulky recap files. This approach does not burden Revit's performance and allows raster images to be generated directly in Revit from point clouds. This is exactly what we will try to understand in the first part of the video. And in the second part, we will examine some of the tools to speed up modeling and ensure model accuracy. You can review the Undead ribbon menu for available tools. Today, I will examine the fit wall and model inspection tool in more detail. To test Undead for yourself, click on the link in the cards above or down in the description of this video to get a 30 day free trial. And full disclosure, this is a sponsored video. So now without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. So when you install Undead, it will appear here as an additional tab on your ribbon. And here we have all of the tools. So to get us started, I'm going to click here on add slice. That's going to start this window, which we're going to be using. And then uh, we need to go here to set project and we can either create a new project or open an existing undead project from an IPCP uh, file. So I actually have a project, so I'm just going to be using that. That's going to open up a file browser and here you can pick the project you want to use. I want to use this one and then I'm going to hit open. Now, once that opens up, it's going to ask you how to insert the undead project so you can uh, adjust the undefined coordinates near to the survey base point or uh, adjust the default site coordinates. So I'm just going to go with the first option and click OK and now that's going to bring everything in. Now, what you'll notice is that, while well, it's still not here. And uh, what actually happens is it brings in the uh, project. However, we need to generate uh, raster images in order to see it. So I'm going to open up the site plan and here I'm going to click on preview. So that's going to start generating a raster uh, image of that point cloud here in the site plan. And once it's done, it's going to appear just like this. Uh, now, as you can see, it's actually quite far away from our survey point and project base point. So what I'll do is I'm just going to go here to the undead tab. Here we have the move tool, which we can use to move this project. So I'm just going to click here and then zoom in and place it exactly there. Okay, so once we have the, the project here, uh, we can work with it as is, or uh, in this case, I just want to rotate it so it's uh, a bit easier to navigate. So let's go here to rotate. And then uh, we can uh, place the center of rotation wherever we like. So I'm just going to place it here. And then let's grab it like this and rotate it. So it's going to snap into that horizontal position just like this. There we go. So it's in place. So now once we have our project in place, I'm going to run a section through this. So let's create a section running through the center, just like that. So once we have the section, we can uh, open it up and it's going to show us well, the section. Now here again, we cannot see the, the project. The whole idea is that we're just using raster images. And as you can see, it's actually quite quick. This, uh, If this was brought in as an actual point cloud, it would be a nightmare to manage and uh, Revit would be extremely slow. Here, it's just images and it's really quick. So uh, now once we're here, uh, let's again go to the uh, preview. 
and it's going to bring that raster image in. And now what they can do is they can just select these two views. So I'm just going to hold the control key, select both of them and place them uh, around this position. Now here we have a bit of an issue. It's actually really hard to define the bottom of the of the floor here. So I'm going to make it a bit easier on myself and I'm going to generate a section that's only going to give me kind of a slice of this point cloud and it's going to be way more precise. So what they'll do uh, here is I'm going to choose the option center view which is just going to give me a slice of this thickness. Uh, for the view direction let's leave it at center. For the resolution we can go with five millimeters uh, and for coloring let's stick to black and white just because it's a section so I don't really need any color and then uh, instead of uh, going to a preview or something like that we want to go with the fine area because I don't need everything I just need the inside of this building so if I go here to the fine area click once hold expand just like that release and now it's going to be generating that new raster image now we have this new raster image and it's exactly what we need to be able to precisely position this elevation. So if I deselect that, select the uh, elevation and now, or the, the level, and now I can just kind of fine tune its position. For level two, I'm just going to place it as is because we do not have an interior uh, point cloud generated for uh, the second level. Okay, now moving forward, uh, we can see that we now have two raster images kind of overlaid over each other. And we can fix that by going here to raster manager. And I can say, okay, this one, I don't want to see. So that was the original one. I just want to see the, uh, I just want to see the section one. And this is what we have now. Okay, so now let's create an elevation view. So for that, uh, I can go back to the site plan, I can use the default elevation that we have, or uh, what I'm going to do is just create another section. So I'm just going to run another section just like this. And then yeah, we can grab just the first wall. So let's place it. Yeah, let's place it like that. Or yeah, we can go perhaps up to here. Okay, so uh, this is going to kind of give us the um, extents or the uh, envelope of what this section is going to grab. And now to create an elevation view for that, uh, we can come to this uh, section view, we can go here and set this to forward. Here, it's going to measure the thickness uh, according to the uh, grips that I've set up for that section, how far it's uh, seeing into the model. Uh, then uh, for our view direction, yeah, just let's just leave it at that. Uh, for resolution, let's go with something uh, a bit more precise. So let's go with 10. I have these presets here. Uh, for uh, the coloring, let's go with source. Uh, and this is going to be the palette. And then we also have the calculate distances, which I'm going to uh, check. So we can just run a quick preview. There we go. And now let's uh, use a defined area. So let's go like this. And this is what we get. As you can see, it looks really, really good. We have a clear image of the of the front facade of this building. Uh, and of course, you can define it even further. So what you can do is you can say, okay, I want to see a particular detail in higher resolution, and then you can set the resolution to let's go with five. Let's cancel this processing. So I'm just going to set that to fine five, and then define a smaller area. And it's going to give us kind of quick, uh, quick uh, rendering or a quick raster image of that particular area. So you can use this to kind of better define certain areas uh, of your point cloud. And now let's try to make a ceiling view. So I'm just going to open up a level one ceiling plan. So I'm going to set this to ceiling view. Uh, let's run a quick preview just to see what that would look like. There we go. And now I can do an even better one. So I'm just going to set the resolution to 10. And then let's uh, define an area and quickly let's see. Yeah, so here we want to make sure that it says ceiling on the view direction. Coloring, you can do plain, so it's going to show a bit more depth. Uh, and then let's define the area like that. 
and see what we get. And this is the result. So when we set the coloring to plain, it's going to give us different colors depending on how close or how far away that uh, plane is from the from the camera or from the uh, from the slice of that view. So if your goal is to model this building now in Revit uh, from that point cloud, uh, we now have uh, more than enough data to, to get along and we can just use these raster images. Uh, so that kind of uh, completes the point where we don't really have this overly heavy uh, overly heavy uh, point cloud model. Uh, we just have a few images and we use those. And we can, of course, always get more images from the main point cloud. Now it's time to actually start modeling. Uh, now I have created a level one floor plan with just a preview. However, I want to refine it just a little bit before I start modeling over it. And for that, I'm going to go here and pick the center view option. The resolution we're going to set to five. Uh, and then also uh, I'm going to keep the coloring at black and white. And we want to focus on a smaller area for now. So I just want to set this area. So let's go to defined uh, area and then click once, hold, drag out and then release. And now it's going to start processing and create another raster image. And this is what we get. So as you can see, it's a lot more precise and a lot easier to uh, work with. So let's now get started. I'm going to go here to the undead tab and here we have the uh, modeling tools. And the first option here is fit wall. So I'm going to pick that option and here we need to define first the wall type and I'm going to pick out the generic 200 millimeter. So basically undead is going to use this wall as a basis uh, to generate walls inside of our model. Uh, for the location line of the wall, we can go with wall center line. So that means that any wall that's placed is going to have the center line at this position. Uh, then we need to set the base offset. I'm going to set that at level one, the top at level two, no offsets and then uh, I'm going to check on create new type. So for any wall that is has different dimensions than 200 millimeters or different thickness, it's going to create a new type and then I'm going to check chain walls of course. Now because it's going to be creating new types, we need to set a naming convention. So it's going to be the same as here. So generic dash and then whatever thickness is and then millimeters. Okay, so once we have all of this set, we can click on here, start modeling walls, and then I can zoom into a part of the building. And let's say I want to create a wall here. So I can click once here to define the starting point, here to define the end point, and then on this line to define the thickness of the wall. And it's going to create a wall exactly in that position. Now, what do we do if we want to create an arc? Well, I have to hit the escape key to go back to our fit wall dialog and check four point arc wall. So what this will allow me to do is to use four points. So here we have this arc, I need to define the first point of the arc, the final point of the arc, uh, the radius by picking any point in the middle, and then define the thickness by selecting the other side of the wall, just like this. And it's going to create a new wall and it's also going to extend this wall. So it's going to join these together because we had that uh, chain option, uh, chain walls option checked here. So this is a really quick and easy way to create walls. Now what you'll notice is if I escape out of here, when I select this wall, as you can see, we have a new type 270 millimeter, and this one is 260 millimeter. Uh, with these uh, point cloud scans, uh, it's usually going to be older buildings. And when you have older buildings, you're usually going to have walls of varying thicknesses all around. So instead of having to go and manually create new walls for each one here, on that plugin is going to do the job for us and just create that new type and place it in its correct place. Now we can do the same thing for columns. So here we have multiple columns. So what they can do is it can go here to undead, go to modeling tools and here underneath walls, we have fit column. So I can use that again, we need to select a column as a starting point or a column family as a starting point define the base and the top uh, and the naming convention is going to be as is and that's 
pretty much it. So let's start modeling columns. So for columns, you click once for one point, the second click is for the second side of the column, I guess you can say, and then the third click is your thickness and it inserts a column there. And then it can go to the side here, for example, one, two, three for thickness, and we get another column there. Now, if I hit the escape key and escape out of here, you can see if I select this column, this is 500 by 500. This is 500 by 520. Again, with older buildings, we're going to have uh, not so uniform columns. And uh, with the undead plugin, it's going to generate new columns for each new uh, column dimensions that it recognizes as we assign them in the model. And once you spend enough time working on this model, you're going to get something that looks like this, which looks really, really good. So now the next step is to check uh, to see if everything was modeled correctly. So for that, we're going to go to model inspection uh, QC report, which is going to allow us to uh, set up some model uh, inspection parameters. So first we have the comparison tolerance. This is basically uh, telling on that uh, how much are we willing to uh, see the difference between the point cloud points and actual Revit geometry. So this is going to be the value. If it's past this, it's going to warn us by coloring that red. And if it's within this tolerance, it's going to be green. Then we have the comparison buffer, uh, which is just telling uh, on that how far it should check uh, away from elements. Then we have the minimum face area. So anything that's at least this big uh, or larger will be uh, will be analyzed and then we have the sampling step or pixels so the smaller number means higher quality larger number smaller quality and let's just set that to four now I'm just going to click OK and now we need to select uh, scan points so for that let's uh, go into a floor plan view here we can find those uh, scan points in the uh, in the floor plan view so I'm just going to add these four to the selection and then hit finish. And now uh, it's going to run the inspection. Now, once this process is completed, then I can go to call browser and I can pick a point which I want to use. And here I have placed it off to the side. Uh, here we can just pick the, the, the latest uh, file that we have and this is what's going to appear. And now here we can look around this room. Uh, now what we can also do is we can open up a 3D view here in Revit. And then uh, we can synchronize these views. So now when I move this view, yeah, the, the Revit uh, view will uh, move as well. Now here, as you can see, the Revit uh, window is quite small in this case. Uh, just uh, just because we have them both on the screen. But yeah, you can have them synchronized. If you have uh, two screens, uh, even better, you can see everything easier and you can see what the uh, point cloud looks like and then uh, what the actual Revit model looks like. And you can use this to follow uh, the point cloud and see if everything was modeled correctly. So for example, in this case, let's say I don't want to model furniture. I can leave that out, but perhaps the radiators are something that they do want to model so I should definitely have them here uh, below the window and yeah we can just look around and see where everything is matching the model it's green and if it's red it means it's not matching the model for whichever reason and then we can look into that and then see how we can uh, solve that issue so there we go that's how you can uh, run an inspection and see uh, if your uh, model is closely uh, following the point cloud you've used as reference so we're going to conclude this video over here I hope you have enjoyed it uh, enjoyed this uh, I'm really excited about this uh, software I, uh, I I think it's really really useful and it makes the whole process of working with point clouds a lot easier uh, as I said you can check it out uh, by following the link up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video and I'll be back with another Balkan Architect video next week. Thank you for watching guys make sure to check out my website BalkanArctic.com for more uh, Revit courses uh, there I have over 120 hours of content uh, and I'm adding more each week make sure to subscribe for more videos and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.